Hi everyone, my name is Medtimed. This video is going to be all about adrenal diseases, so we're specifically looking into Cushing's and Addison's disease in this video. Of course, there are many other adrenal diseases, but I've chosen these two to focus on today. These notes are based on the following resources. I've been using Scott's notes recently, as well as the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, and of course, utilising the NICE guidelines for treatment. As a disclaimer, I am a third year medical student. This video is not intended to be a substitute for any professional medical advice, and you should always consult your doctor about any health concerns. So let's start with what the adrenal glands are. First of all, they're an endocrine gland. So remember, these are responsible for secreting hormones. This particular gland is found above the kidneys, as the word adrenal actually comes from Latin. So ad meaning near, and renal meaning kidney. Lastly, we also know that the adrenal glands are made up of the cortex and the medulla. The cortex is actually made up of three zones. There's the zona glomerulosa, which releases mineral corticoids like aldosterone, which you can see listed on the diagram. There's the zona fasciculata, which releases glucocorticoids like cortisol. And the zona reticularis, which releases androgens like dehydroepiandosterone. Then, Separate to the cortex, you have the innermost layer, the medulla, which is responsible for secreting stress hormones such as adrenaline. So looking at these, you can kind of imagine what symptoms might come about if you are under or over producing these hormones. Specifically, as we've mentioned, we're only going to be looking into Cushing's and adrenal insufficiency today. Now, when we describe these adrenal hormones in excess, we call it Cushing syndrome. But what's important to understand is that Cushing's syndrome is not actually the same as Cushing's disease. Cushing's disease is a specific type of Cushing's syndrome, but it's actually caused by a pituitary tumour. The pathway in which the adrenal glands release cortisol is called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA for short. If something goes wrong within this pathway, you may produce too much or too little cortisol. First, the hypothalamus in the brain is responsible for releasing corticotropin-releasing hormone, or factor, which is labelled CRH in the diagram. Then, this stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete ACTH, which in turn then stimulates the adrenal cortex to release cortisol. Cushing syndrome is characterised by chronic glucocorticoid excess plus the loss of normal feedback mechanisms on the HPA axis, as well as the loss of circadian rhythm of normal cortisol secretion. So in healthy individuals, you find that cortisol is actually at its highest in the morning. So we're going to look into the causes of Cushing syndrome. We've already got an idea that Cushing's disease is one of the types. But we have ACTH dependent and ACTH independent causes, so meaning it's either caused by excess ACTH release or it isn't. So let's look into ACTH dependent causes first. So as we mentioned, we've got Cushing's disease and ectopic ACTH production, which often occurs particularly in small cell lung cancers or carcinoid tumours. Often in these patients, you'll notice pigmentation due to a very high ACTH. You might notice hyperkalemic metabolic alkalosis because this increase in cortisol leads to mineral corticoid activity. They more, may also have symptoms of weight loss and hyperglycemia. So often it's the classical features of Cushing's are absent, which means it's actually tricky to diagnose this atopic ACTH production. Then we have ACTH independent causes. So first on this list is obviously steroids. So this is an iatrogenic cause, so it's induced by doctors. This is actually the most common cause of Cushing's, as you can imagine. Then we have adrenal adenomas. So rather than being a disease of the pituitary, which affects the ACTH release, this is an intrinsic disease of the adrenal gland, so it isn't actually anything to do with ACTH. No matter how much you pump of ACTH, it's always releasing this cortisol. Then, similarly, there's also adrenal nodular hyperplasia. You also have rarer syndromes as well, 
that's listed here. So, symptoms of Cushing syndrome. Often, the patients will complain of weight gain. They may exhibit mood changes. So again, be mindful if you're in a psychiatric setting that there may be an organic cause. So thinking about Cushing's when you see patients potentially presenting with psychosis. They may get symptoms like proximal weakness, gonadal dysfunction. So this is kind of a male pattern hair growth or hirsutism in women. Uh, irregular periods as well and erectile dysfunction in men. Acne might also occur. And some patients actually get recurrent Achilles tendon rupture. A particularly rare symptom but does occur in females is virilization. Whilst your patients will complain of symptoms, you might actually notice certain characteristics on, on examination that are really typical with Cushing's. So firstly, there's central obesity. They might be plethoric, have a moon face, or even a buffalo hump, and we'll, we'll come on to these later. You may notice some supraclavicular fat distribution, some skin or muscle atrophy. These patients may have bruises or these really characteristic purple abdominal striae. They may have osteoporosis, raised blood pressure and glucose as well. Lastly, they might also be infection prone or you notice this poor healing of wounds. Right, I think it's really important to be able to visualise some of these signs. So here's an example of moon face, which is this really characteristic rounded appearance of the face, which is due to fat deposits either side. So this is what a buffalo hump looks like in Cushing's. Again, this is also due to this fat accumulation. And I really like this image because it, it shows clearly what this patient looked like before Cushing's had onset and after with this really characteristic buffalo hump. And then lastly, these are the purple striae you may notice on their abdomen. So we've spoken about Cushing's disease as being a type of an ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome, but I think it's really important to go over in detail. This is a disease due to a pituitary adenoma. This is often small or what we term to be a microadenoma but it's actively secreting ACTH, and because of this, it leads to what we call bilateral adrenal hyperplasia. Usually, its peak is around 30 to 50 years old. So if you've got a patient presenting with these symptoms and you can't find any immediate cause, like they're not on any steroids, you may need to consider Cushing's disease. You identified the symptoms and signs of Cushing's and you believe that your patient might have this syndrome. So how do you diagnose it and the underlying cause? The most important thing is do not rely on imaging because one, we've mentioned that you can get these microadenomas. So the tumour might actually be too small to see. Alternatively, when you do image, you might notice that you have an incidental finding. So this could be um, a tumour, an adenoma, that's not actually causing any symptoms and could mislead you to the cause of the syndrome. You can confirm the diagnosis of Cushing's via a salivary and blood serum cortisol, as well as these 24-hour urinary free cortisol tests. Doing a dexamethasone test is a brilliant next step. So this is where the patient orally ingests dexamethasone, about one milligram per at, at midnight, and then you do a serum cortisol test the next morning at around 8 a.m. It should be suppressed because it's dexamethasone administration, but in Cushing syndrome, it actually won't be suppressed. So again, you're already thinking, okay, Cushing syndrome. Now, in order to localize the lesion, you might first want to try a plasma ACTH. If the ACTH is undetectable, an adrenal tumour is likely because it's not due to ACTH secretion. If the ACTH is undetectable, you're going to want to move on to do a CT or MRI to look at the adrenal glands. If there's still no mass imaged when you're doing the CT, progress to adrenal vein sampling. If ACTH is detectable, you can then carry out a corticotropin releasing hormone test it's necessary to see whether the disease is associated with pituitary disease or ectopic ACTH production. If the test indicates that cortisol responds to this manipulation, then the most likely diagnosis is Cushing's disease. 
So you should image the pituitary via MRI and consider doing a bilateral inferior petrosal sinus blood sampling. Okay, so to treat Cushing's syndrome, it's all about localising the cause. If it's iatrogenic, then obviously you should stop the medication which is causing the symptoms. If it is Cushing's disease, then you should remove the pituitary adenoma. If there's an adrenal adenoma or carcinoma, consider doing an adrenalectomy or radiotherapy if there's cancer. Lastly, an ectopic ACTH production, so remember that's to do with the lung cell cancers and carcinoma tumours, you should use surgery as a first line of treatment if it hasn't spread. We finish with Cushing syndrome where there's too many adrenal hormones, so that's what happens if there's too little. This is called adrenal insufficiency. There are two different types of insufficiency. There's primary adrenocortical insufficiency, which is also called Addison's disease, and there's secondary adrenal insufficiency. Addison's disease is actually very rare, but can be fatal. It stems from the, the destruction of the adrenal cortex. So remember, this is where glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids are released from. So if you're destroying these areas, it's going to result in their deficiency. 80% of all cases of Addison's are from autoimmunity in the UK, but it can be caused by other diseases such as TB, which is actually the most common cause worldwide, as well as other cancers. In secondary adrenal insufficiency, the most common cause is long-term steroid usage that has led to the suppression of the pituitary adrenal access. The other causes, such as hypothalamic pituitary disease, is rare and leads to decreased ACTH production. So the way I like to remember the symptoms of adrenal insufficiency is tan, tired and tearful. They may also be lean, have a lot of weakness as well anorexia or prone to dizziness and fainting. In some patients they may have mood related symptoms such as depression or psychosis. So again, like I said earlier, think back to what an early presentation for a psychiatric illness may actually be organic. These patients may have GI related symptoms. They may have pigmented palmar creases, postural hypertension, vitiligo, and they may actually go into shock. I think the pathophysiology behind the tanning in these patients is actually really interesting. So remember, this is due to an adrenal problem, which means that ACTH will often be increased because it's trying to stimulate the adrenal gland to produce more hormones. In the case where it's raised, ACTH acts on melanocytes to produce melanin. But remember, in cases of adrenal insufficiency where ACTH is suppressed, so this is the secondary causes, so hypothalamic pituitary disease, ACTH will be decreased and you won't see this tanning effect. When looking at these blood results, you might notice that these patients are hyponatremic or hyperkalemic because this is due to the decreased mineral corticoid production. Similarly, they may have decreased glucose due to poor cortisol production. They may be uremic or hypercalcemic. An ACTH stimulation test may reveal an inappropriately high ACTH or low in those secondary causes. So you should always test for autoantibodies as well. When discussing treatment, the first thing you need to do is identify whether they're in an Addisonian crisis. So treat this if it occurs, but otherwise, if it's a less acute problem, the next thing you would do is to replace the steroids in these patients by giving 15 to 25 milligrams of hydrocortisone daily. Then you can give mineral corticoids for postural hypertension and fludrocortisone to correct the hyponatremia and hyperkalemia. If there is a poor response to all of this treatment, you may need to think along the lines of autoimmune diseases so you should check the thyroid and do a celiac serology. If patients are taking steroids, you should always advise wearing a steroid bracelet and give advice as when to increase their usage, such as during strenuous exercise or when in sickness. Okay, so if a patient with Addison's disease misses their medication 
or maybe has an infection, trauma or recent surgery, they may go into an Addisonian crisis. These patients present with shock symptoms, so things like tachycardia, postural hypertension, feeling quite weak and confused, and potentially, along the line, they may be in a coma. Alternatively, some patients present slightly differently, and they may present with hyperglycemia. Treatment requires urgent checking of bloods for cortisol and ACTH. You must give hydrocortisone 100 mg stat via IV for an Addisonian crisis and an IV fluid bolus of 500 mg of 0.9 saline in order to treat this low blood pressure. You should keep monitoring your patient's blood glucose. You may need to give an IV glucose if they become hyperglycemic. And if there are concerns regarding infection, you should check bloods, urine and sputum for culture and potentially give antibiotics. Once the patient is getting better, you will change it to an oral steroid instead. But you should always make sure to find the underlying cause and consult an endocrinologist for support, even if the patient appears to be getting better. OK, you've reached the end. So here's our summary. Firstly, as we now know, the adrenal gland is made up of the cortex, which has the zona glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis, as well as the medulla. We've also learned that Cushing's disease is a type of Cushing syndrome. And Cushing syndrome can be ACTH dependent or independent. When examining a patient with Cushing syndrome, you may notice that they have what is called a moon face, a buffalo hump, or purple abdominal striae. The treatment for Cushing's is often surgical or stopping medication if it is iatrogenic induced. Then we learnt about adrenal insufficiency, which presents as tan, tired and teary. And in order to treat this, we give corticosteroids, mineral corticoids and fluidocortisone. Thank you so much for listening.